program, as Alina said, is Defeat U.S. Imperialism. And I just want to read um, what we say about it in our program. So we said, um, as we make demands for self-determination within oppressed communities in the U.S., we also affirm these rights for oppressed nations around the world, many of which are fighting valiantly against U.S. imperialism. Wherever U.S. imperialism goes, whether in the form of military, political, or economic incursions, what inevitably follows is death, poverty, and the destruction of cultures, infrastructures, and economies. We stand in solidarity with the people of Africa, Asia, the Middle East, Latin America, and beyond, who continue to resist the efforts of imperialist countries to exploit their lands and people. Um, so, this is part of our program, obviously, we believe very strongly in it, and um, as FIST, we go out of our way to try to show that solidarity as often as possible. Um, so we participate in demonstrations here in the U.S., and I'm sure we've met a bunch of you at those demonstrations. Um, and we participated in a number of solidarity delegations as well um, to countries under the gun of U.S. imperialism, um, and to, it, at the same time as countries with strong and inspiring resistance movements, um, many of which have youth at the forefront of those movements. So um, in 2006, I think it was 2006, um, Youth FIST organized a youth delegation to revolutionary Cuba, um, where we were able to interact with the Young Communist League, among other sectors of the, of the society. And, um, you know, we made it a point to tell everyone that we met in Cuba that our goal was to create a revolution in the United States. And we were actually, we were really well received by it, but because of that, um, one person told us that we were the only, um, like, socialist identified group that came and said that they wanted to create a revolution in the U.S. that had come as, as, as youth, that had come to Cuba and said that. And so they were really impressed by, um, by that. Um, and of course, as I'm sure you all know, a revolution in the U.S. would be an incredible boost to the Cuban revolution and anywhere else where revolutionary processes are taking place. Um, the, the one thing I, I, I want to say about the Cuba trip, the, or with the youth in Cuba, was it was what struck me as really impressive was the rec recognition that the Cuban government and the revolutionary movement had this recognition of youth as you know leaders and 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 they really needed to be at the forefront of the revolutionary movement. Um, and so so you know the decision, lots of decision making was made among the youth, lots of the organizing uh, in the, within the communities um, was done by the youth in Cuba. Um, so, so that was that trip, and then as, as recently, as, as Elena mentioned, as a representative of FIST, I traveled to Honduras. Um, and in Honduras recently, um, four months ago, this right-wing oligarchy uh, committed a coup against the president of the country. They kidnapped him in his pajamas in the middle of the night. Um, and since that time, people in Honduras, and particularly youth, have been engaged in this daily fierce resistance you know, against the repression of the state, you know, and, and um, one of the things that we pointed out when we were there is that it was actually the, the very same weapons, um, the same tear gas and the same uh, long-range acoustic devices, which, which makes this, like, horrible sound that's um, debilitating. Um, those same weapons made by the U.S. were used in Honduras, Against, against the young people in Honduras were also used in Pittsburgh against young people during the G20 uh, a few months back. Um, and we met uh, a group of youth, um, this group called Los Necios, who, um, similar to ourselves in FIST, um, they engage in, they not only participate on the streets, but they also engage in study of revolutionary theory, and um, they apply these theories to their current struggles. So it was really cool. We got to go to, um, every Saturday, they have a class on, um, revolutionary theory, and they study everything from like Marx and Lenin to Mao to, you know, all these different revolutionary leaders and try to um, take that analysis and put it all, and, and kind of put it together for their own practice. Um, so, you know, it, it's great to, to go and see these experiences, but also to express the solidarity of the young people in the United States at the same time. Um, and as the economic crisis hits all of us here in the U.S., we will continue to make the connections between the wars being waged at home and abroad. Um, you know, how the military aid sent to Israel to wage war on the Palestinians, um, how that money could be used to, just like Larry was talking about, stop the tuition hikes, you know, or create jobs programs for youth. Um, of how the U.S. commits horrible, I'm almost done, um, of how the U.S. commits horrible atrocities against immigrants, while at the same time imposing economic and military policies that force people to leave their home countries in search of work in the U.S., um, of how the U.S. claims to liberate women in Afghanistan, yet they would deny reproductive rights is just one of many examples to women in the U.S., you know. 
Um, we believe that within these connections lies the basis for unity, and that unity is the basis for victory and struggle, uh, with the ultimate victory, of course, being a revolution.